here we go. We're going to talk about... I guess what we're going to talk about is medic survivability on Viaduct. Um, medic is, you know, kind of... Kind of hard to play on this map, I'd say. It's a very DM-centered map. One of the most, you know, has some of the most action, the most fast-paced, you know, action in the game, in the competitive scene as we know it. Um, but basically what I want to talk about is medic survivability. First off, I'll just go over medic movement basics. If you're moving as a medic like this, you're very easy to kill, okay? If your movements, you know, even if you're doing stuff like this, like, you're very easy to kill. If someone's pushing you from the front and you hold S, you're easy to kill. Because what does it look like? It looks like this. They can keep their mouse right here, and it's still on your chest the whole time you're running away. So, the thing about movement, and this really holds for every class, but on Medic, oh, you have to jump to walk over this now? That's sad. Needs to be fixed. Um, for Medic, your survivability is so important that movement really is one of your strongest tools. So as a Medic, you know, if you're going to be backing up like this, add in, add, in, add in some jukes, you know. Add in some jumps. If you're moving to the side and you jump, don't just jump and then move straight. Don't, don't just move in these linear fashions, you know. Start adding in movement that's like, you know, a little bit of air strafing. Work on that kind of stuff. This is the stuff that the best medics do that make them harder to hit and more unpredictable. So even just like this, jumping off here and doing some like quick jiggles in the air, you know. The scout's here, maybe he flicks a little bit to the right and you just air strafe to the left. You know, he's going to miss. But why would he flick if you're just, just moving straight, you know. If you add in this these extra movements... It forces people to aim. That's really it. You're trying to make it harder for them to kill you because you're trying to make it take more effort to kill you. Which means aiming more, adjusting more, missing more. So, movement in general should should always include a lot of button presses, a lot of stop and go, direction changing. You know, not just forward and back, left to right, but forward and back as, as well as side to side. So, you know, honestly, one of the big things to work on is just Get comfortable doing this kind of stuff. Walking in a circle. Just walking your fingers around your WASD. Just doing it. Just doing it. And once you can do this, you're always moving. You're always going to be moving. And then when you're when you're jumping around, you can just throw that in for a second. You just sp sprinkle it in, you know? Along with your jukes, along with your jumps and air strafes, you know? Um, but I'll elaborate even more. Like, jumping... Jumping is one of the best ways to get behind cover. If someone's chasing you around a corner, if you can do a clean air strafe, you can surf around the corner. But if you if you just run it, you just you I don't know. You just have to go all the way and it's not as clean. I don't know. I feel like if you jump, you can kind of like tuck yourself in because you can jump and crouch in the air and then once you're jumped and crouched, you just you just sneak right behind it. You know, you take some cover. I like it. That's what I do. Anyways, we're supposed to talk about this map in particular, all right? Viaduct as a map, as a medic, the number one thing you need to be conscious of is sniper sight lines, okay? This is a heavily sniper dominated map. If you stand right here, you can see everything, right? So this is basically the sight line that you need to keep in mind when you're playing medic. Picture it from their eyes. If the sniper is sitting right here, what can he see and what can't he see? And you really want to think of it as the sniper sight lines basically tells you where you can't be. Because as a medic, why would you risk giving him that shot? Why would you risk completely crippling your team? You know? Because you can navigate this map without exposing yourself too badly. You know? The first thing you want to notice is where can't the sniper see? He can't see behind this wall. Can't see behind that entire house except that one corner on the stairs. Can't see anything really down there from here. So that that is kind of safe. Can't see behind the rock. Can't see behind the cliff. And can't see up on this whole side here. 
So, if you're gonna if you're gonna interpret that from the other side, what that means is, I mean, pretty much the easiest way to think about it is, if you can't see the sniper, he can't see you. So try and make it so you never see the sniper. If you never see him, he will never have a shot on you. So if you're gonna be approaching the point, if you approach like this, obviously you're gonna get body shot. If you approach hugging the wall, and you know, still doing the movement that we talked about, you know, like still jumping around and as you approach, not moving in straight lines, but also moving within, you know, the restrictions that are placed on you by a sniper, you're gonna survive more. In every situation, you need to think about this. Even if you're being pressured, so even if you're on the point just like this, you're being pressured, you know the sniper's like down there, you know the sniper's at cliff, obviously information is everything, but once you know where that sniper is, you need to start visualizing these sight lines. If you're getting pressured by a scout, you can't forget about the sniper. The sniper's already been called. Just because the scout's pushing you doesn't mean, oh, you can now dodge out here. No. Everything is limited, and then within those restrictions, you need to react. You need to adapt to that. So if a scout's pushing you here, you're going to have to, you know, play within this sight line, but you're going to have to dodge around in here. You don't have the, the luxury of having all this space. But why would you give two people the chance to kill you when you could just limit it to the scout being the only one able to kill you because a sniper could just be sitting here you're dodging a scout then boom you get sniped you know so never forgetting that the sniper will improve your awareness will improve your survivability um, never being able to see the sniper is maybe a, an easy guideline as to how to you know avoid avoid those sniper sight lines you know being here on the point if you know the snipers on China you you just play around that you play around it you push forward on the point but in these these lanes that he can't see you don't push towards the point right here because now you're out in the open you don't push towards the point and then strafe wide like this once you get up close sure you know you can you can start moving over here and of course once your teammates you know start peeking that's when you start edging things start getting a little bit more confident because your teammates act as more cover you can play behind them, they can put out pressure on the sniper. Ultimately, surviving the sniper is one of the most important things on Viaduct as a medic. Okay? So just always keep that in mind. <coughs> Other things in terms of survivability is positioning, right? If you are playing far forward, you're actually at a much lower risk of dying because they can't get through the choke points if you're playing with your teammates and controlling these chokes. You know, how is a soldier going to bomb you if he's getting juggled in the doorway and completely denied? If you're healing people forward. You know, usually the medic will play over here. Um, at least on the forward holds that my team has developed. The medic will play up here. And assuming, you know, you trust your teammates to be plugging up these entrances and getting early calls, you know, um, the medic is actually safer being further forward if you have more control of the map. But then where that starts breaking down is when you're f uh, forward enough where you can't really control the choke points, but you're within range of being, you know, attacked by them. So anywhere kind of in, in this front, like, quadrant of the map, like if you split the map in like four, four slices here, this forward quadrant, if you're controlling it, is actually much safer than being in this like middle quadrant here and not controlling the front because they have the room to get through the chokes and then they just have the freedom to do whatever and make the plays you know so you kind of got to know where you're safe and where you're where you're vulnerable where you're at risk if you're playing here what's what's the biggest risk you know soldiers can bomb over the top you know scouts can rush around here if you're playing highlander spies could be anywhere you know, these kinds of things can happen if you're here. But if you're controlling the choke points, it can't happen. This gets, you know, this kind of builds upon itself. If you're playing back here, you know, your team really isn't controlling much. Your heals influence where your team plays. If you're playing back here, you're giving the other team a lot of room. Because if the other team decides to fight people, if they decide to challenge anyone, if they take a fight right here, your teammates, when they... Lo start losing that fight or start losing health at all they have to back all the way up to here and what that does is it frees up all this extra room for the other team 
So I just want you to start thinking about how the medic positioning in order to like survive can often also make your team much more vulnerable. So playing a position like this is extremely passive. You don't have a lot of control and you're at low ground and if they bomb in the high ground just they claim these spots like the rock you know they bomb onto your cliff they can flood through over here and you just start getting overwhelmed so if you're gonna play passive you want to be thinking about these things think about your positioning how much how much different is it to be playing right here compared to right here in terms of control of the map it's roughly the same you still can heal your teammates that are around the edge of the point in fact you actually might be safer because there's no risk of you you know peeking out and getting sniped right here um, so you're actually co covered from a lot more things and this whole wall here prevents people from bombing directly over you and you have high ground so when people jump at you if they land down here it's much harder for them to kill you so something as simple as repositioning to uh, the high ground can be a great way to um, a great way to survive as a medic and you can you can really just find positions like that that force the other team into a a disadvantageous position in order to kill you like imagine this scenario you kill their medic so assuming time has passed their medic is still dead if you know they're being aggressive like your team is fighting an actually fairly safe spot to be is inside here because this this kind of gives you the same security of being forward in that there's just tiny choke points and if anyone wants to get to you they have to put themselves through these entrances or they have to peek it you know they're pretty small so not only do you have the cover of the walls you also have the security that if you're with someone they have an easy time controlling these these doorways because people have to funnel through them so you could realistically kill their medic and then just you know they're coming in to chase you you just come in here and now you're actually much safer because you're in like a safe room being in a safe room obviously while you won't die is a terrible way to control the map um, because you give up so much room but there are situations where you need to play for control you need to play for positioning and there are certain times when you need to play for survivability okay so <clears throat> yeah in general that's that's really one of the most important things um, pushing out a spawn I guess I'll talk about this a little bit pushing out a spawn you know I said it from the other side it's easy to funnel people through those choke points and to control them so as a medic it can be very predictable if your whole team is walking through here and then you as a medic just follows in right behind them so a lot of times what you want to be doing as a medic is baiting baiting yourself out this happens to me constantly like I play roamer and I'm like I think I'm clever I see their team walk through and I bomb over their heads to try and catch the medic right behind them and then the medic has decided that he's not gonna fall for it so he sits back here and then I can't get him because everyone that I jumped over is just gonna turn around and kill me if the medic was you know just following closely behind his teammates he could be very vulnerable especially in these choke points so being cautious around choke points is important you know not fully committing maybe there's a trap still you know edging the edging the uh, entrance trying to bait out traps peeking all the corners peeking everything when you get through so crucial you know because your teammates are focused on taking ground and sometimes you're more focused on looking around and you can spot things they won't you know as a medic these extra corners that your teammates don't clear these are your responsibility you know you want to look at your teammates observe what they look at observe what they clear trust that they cleared it properly and then you know move from there but if you notice you know I walked through here my soldier didn't quite look to the right maybe you just peek it like that really quick and then oh you know you don't full commit because if you just like run through and I'm gonna check the corner you're just gonna die but if you're like there's a chance someone's in there boop, quick quick peek if you see someone boom you're out you're gone because not only do they have to react to you peeking it then they start scrambling because you look them in the face then they have to chase you it's all so delayed because you were the one that initiated the peek and they're just reacting you know so everything everything is just slower for them it gives you that that extra second to escape um, and uh, yeah I mean I guess that's that's really it um, that's really the basics of surviving um, I will also mention that using uber on this map I I'm always much prefer using uber aggressively on this map using it proactively being the one to 
claim ground with the uber rather than the one giving up ground only to counter uber defensively because just look at what happens so say i uber in right off the cliff we push in and the other team has decided they're going to sit their medic right here he's going to hold his uber and then he's going to flash people okay so what what happens in that situation is the person you uber is going to focus down the person at the front right here so this medic is going to feel pressure you know he has to save someone they're already going to be weak He's going to get forced, and then they're going to have to fight uphill, you know, they're going to have to fight uphill, and then they're going to have to retake this whole point that you've claimed with your Uber, you know? Being in any position like this, and then waiting to get forced right here is awful, because now you're reclaiming ground, like, if you were already in control of the point, you're reclaiming what you already owned. The other team has pushed in more aggressively, they've claimed the ground, and now they have all this space to work with when they need to retreat or spread out or whatever and you're limited to this thin little strip down here and you're in like a little height advantage height disadvantage pit and it just sucks so the proper way to handle an aggressive uber like that is for your medic to just say i'm ubering in and you meet them halfway because that way that way no one is getting a more favorable you know positioning out of the uber in fact you're probably going to get the upper hand because now it's even ground but you have the uber advantage because you popped later so this is kind of a theory that can be applied to every map but viaduct in particular because of the geometry um and terrain it, it really becomes a big a big factor so um just trying to think anything else in terms of medic survivability um you know, I think that's that's mainly it, but the thing to understand also about Viaduct as a medic is spawns are much in your favor if you're on offense. So, you know, playing a little bit aggressive in order to kill their medic, if you can all in with your team to trade with their medic, it actually might pay off for you because you'll get heals up first and you can roll out with your team and have the heal advantage. So always keep that in mind. You know, there are certain situations where, you know, it might be worth it to, because it's such a DM heavy map, it might be worth it to, you know, give people that extra bit of healing in a DM fight. And uh, on that note, I hope it helped. Hope you guys uh, that love playing Medic on Viaduct have, uh, have learned a thing or two, maybe. Thought about things in maybe a different way. And uh, good luck surviving out there. Alright. And now... It is time 